All right, guys. So today we have some pretty sad news, a bit unfortunate, not just a bit, pretty unfortunate. And um, I feel bad about it. So um, Mad Skills Motocross Chasing the Dream, it was announced a while back, right? We did get a live stream where Turbo Rilla, I believe it was Joe from Turbo Rilla was streaming the game. Hodge was in the chat. They were talking about what they wanted to do. They had big plans for the game. And they were planning on releasing a demo um, shortly after. I believe that was somewhere March, maybe February. I'm not sure, but the beginning of the year. And then they said within a few weeks they were going to have a demo for the community to try and then take feedback. They wanted this to be a very community-driven game. Turbo Rilla and LCQ Studios had teamed up to to do this game. So um, it was really exciting news, especially, you know, for for Hodge and his team and LCQ Studios and then for Mad Skills um, Motocross, Turbo Rilla, to do a, a full MX game, not just a mobile game, right? So um, it was really big news. I was excited. Um, I think a bunch of you were excited. Kind of an arcade game. Well, that has been canceled. So you should see something on screen, but... It's been announced, I believe it was about a week ago, maybe exactly a week ago by the time you see this video, that LCQ Studios and Turbo Rilla have mutually decided to end their partnership making Mad Skills Motocross Chasing the Dream. Now, there is so much more to read. There's a video from LCQ Studios with Hodge talking about it. There's a video from Joe on their YouTube channel, and I really, really, really mean it. I do encourage you guys to go check that out because there's a lot of information in there where they're going to go, or they did go more in depth than I'm going to hear. But yeah, if you just wanted to know about the game and the main um, point to the video, that's it. So um, the game is canceled. It won't be happening. No further development. Um, for Mad Skills Motocross Chasing the Dream or the first Motocross Chasing the Dream, the original one from LCQ Studio. So that's the main point. If that's all you care about, there you go. But if you wanted to know more about what happened and why this is happening and what the plan is for the future, we're going to go into that right now. So going a bit, diving in deeper to this, the main reason why this partnership has ended isn't because they didn't get along or they don't like each other. They're actually, they said that Hodge said and Joe said that they've actually become pretty good friends. So um, it isn't because of that. It's because of funding. So to put it in short, basically what happened, because this partnership was about two years. They had been doing this for about two years, even if we didn't find out about it until this year. But um, they've been doing the partnership for about two years and so they wanted to get a publisher for funding, mostly, and they went to, I forget what it was, but they said they went to some kind of a game convention where you can network and pitch your ideas and stuff and try to pick up a publisher for your game. And they said they had some interest, but they wanted to see multiplayer, and they thought maybe the game wasn't far enough along or whatever. But they did have some interest. So they went into it wanting to get about $2 million, I believe, in funding. And you might think, oh my gosh, that's so much money. No, that really isn't. Um, for not even big games. I'm not even talking about like the GTA games and the Call of Duties. But that really isn't that much or to ask for funding to make a game. Well, that didn't go over the way they wanted it to. So what they did is they tried to streamline that and just put the the things that they thought were really, really important. So multiplayer, physics, and modding. That was the what they wanted to be the core of the game, and they were able to cut the, the funding, the budget down, to about 500000 That is a huge... Um, they lowered that so much from where it was before by trying to just get the the main important things in the game. It doesn't mean the game would have been just bare bones the entire time, but at least from the beginning, it would have been that way. So they said they had one publisher that was very interested and was going to do it, but then at the very last second, they backed out. 
And Hodge, I believe, said it's kind of like running a race and then getting tripped at the finish line. So mostly what it came down to was the funding. Um, they just didn't have the funding. Joe from Turbo Brilla said that Turbo Brilla would have loved to have funded it and been able to do it, but they weren't in a position um, at the time. So neither one of them said that a collaboration might not happen in the future, but at least not right now. And it was it was really it just makes you feel really bad for him because you could tell that Joe from Turbo Brilla was very passionate about it. Um, they also, they kind of went into detail that, um, you know, these publishers, a lot of money, Hodge kind of talks about it, but a lot of money has dried up since 2020, um, 2020, 2021 and employees, the, the game industry has laid off a bunch of employees, I guess. So not a great time for it, but also the publishers look at the numbers and they see that, well, we know this already, but motocross games are a very niche area right they're not huge games that are gonna draw massive crowds they've never really been that way but they're definitely in a worse place right now than they've been in the past I mean yeah you've got bikes and Joe talked about that that they kind of look at that as being one of the bigger games right now and that the community hasn't been too happy with some of the recent motocross games like uh, Milestone for example you know how the last few MXGP games, Supercross games have been very copy and paste. It hasn't been good. It, ha it hasn't been good. And um, the publishers don't want to, you know, give you $2 million to do the game. And then you only make half a million dollars back and they lose a ton of money, right? They're scared of that. So it's unfortunate. And it's really unfortunate, really, really unfortunate for Michael Hodge and his team. I mean, he said, I didn't realize it had been that long, but He's been doing this for nine years. He's been trying to get this game going or some version of this game going for nine years. And the crazy thing is I've been covering it the entire time, you know, since the beginning. I just didn't realize it was that long. But, you know, we've been here. Us as a community have been here along with him. And it's just so you feel so bad for him because of the hard work he's been doing and it just can't happen. It's one thing or another. And it's out of his control. It's completely out of his control. But he did give some hope that they're going to take their physics and they can't revive MCTD off of Steam because that it just doesn't work since they pulled the game. So he said he kind of talked about how they're going to be working on a game. He didn't want to talk about a name or whatever. He'd let us know when they're ready to do it. But for sure, he probably doesn't want to announce anything or say too much until he's sure that the game will actually go through you know won't have some you know some setbacks are one thing but just to have this really really bad luck I guess um yeah you just you just feel bad for him and I want to support him as as much as possible and he said don't worry we're not in this to make tons of money you don't <laughs> you don't try to make a an indie motocross game and try to get super super rich he said that if you did buy the original MCTD, whatever they do next or whatever game it is, you will get that for free. So he's going to honor it. Don't worry. Um, that would have been the least of my concerns. I'm just concerned that, not concerned, but just wanting them to, to be able to catch a break, right? To be able to catch a break. So I probably missed a bunch of stuff, but that was kind of the, the short version. And I do encourage you guys to go watch the Michael Hodge LCQ Studios and Joe Turbo Rilla videos because they explain it way better. They were firsthand there and they were the ones involved. So really sad news for, for the motocross gaming community because it's just it's not just that you didn't get a game. It's just to see the developers of games that we love have to go through such really tough stuff you know motocross games are in a bit of a dark age um, I wanted to do a video kind of like this um, not not because of the bad news with the MCTD mad skills motocross game but it just you know with milestone having put out supercross and MXGP games that were very similar every year and then stopping supercross for a year and giving up on MXGP and now we have MXGP back, but we don't know how good that game is going to be. MX vs. ATB has been really consistent. That game has continually gotten better. And then you have bikes and sim on PC, and I still maintain that 
bikes is probably the best motocross game out there. But not everybody has a PC, and I think it's a bit insensitive for people on PC that play that game just to say how crappy all games are except for bikes and just buy a PC. Some people don't want to do it or can't afford it or whatever, and they're on console. So, um, yeah, it's a tough spot, but there is hope and light at the end of this tunnel. And I do believe with the new MXGP game, Supercross, Legends, and um, Hodge working on stuff, we might see some sort of a revival in the future here and maybe motocross games can can get in a better spot right we can have more games from more developers and more choice and they'll push each other to make better games hopefully um, but let me know in the comments what you guys think you guys girls are absolutely amazing thank you so much for the support on the channel lately it really does mean a lot and until the next video take it easy